algebra one lesson seventy seven consecutive odd and consecutive even integers and then fraction and decimal word problems fraction and decimal word problems isn't going to be too difficult for us consecutive odd and even integers is a continuation of the previous lesson where we learned how to find ah three numbers that follow each other however as the name implies we're looking for consecutive odd and consecutive even integers what these two ah phrases mean consecutive odd integers is just talking about odd numbers that follow each other for example one three five seven nine eleven and then consecutive even integers would be even numbers that follow each other two four six eight now there's a common uh, mistake that people try to make with consecutive odd and even integers uh, before we do that let's just do a quick recap on consecutive integers you know like one two three four five six seven eight uh, if i have to do three consecutive integers the first number is going to be n right second number n plus one because one one plus two is two so one two and the third number n plus two and so on and so forth because if n is one then the next number has to be 2, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 3, or 1 plus 2 is 3, so 1, 2, 3, it works. Now that's normal consecutive integers. Now, when we talk about consecutive odd integers, the first number is still going to be n, because we don't know what it is, right? Now, let's say n is 1, the next odd number is 3. So in order to get to 3, how much do I have to add to 1? 2. So the second number is going to be n plus 2, so 1, 3, and then the next number uh, is going to be 5, right? How much do I have to add to 1 to get to 5? 4. So then it's going to be n plus 4. So you see the trend here. This one, uh, we start off with the first number, then we count up by 1. And then for odd numbers, so this is for odds, we start with the first number, we count up by 2. Now, this is what tricks people out. For even numbers, We do the exact same thing, right? And the reason why is because if our first number is 2, in order to get to the next number 4, 2 plus 2 is 4. All right, then the next number would be 6. 2 plus 4 is 6. Now, the reason why even and odd numbers have the exact same pattern of unknowns is because of the distance between integers. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And we see that here on these number lines. So if we start with an even number, the distance to the next even number is 1, 2. Same thing with odd. If we start with negative 3, the next odd number is 1, 2. So the distance between odd numbers is 2, and the distance between even numbers is 2. So <coughs> please, please do not forget that. Because people have a tendency when they're doing odds, they want to write n, n plus 1, n plus 3. Don't do that. <coughs> Excuse me. That is probably one of the most common mistakes that I see on these types of problems. So, regardless of even or odd, or odd or even, the distance between the numbers will always be the same. And then if you're just doing normal consecutive integers, it's just n, n plus 1, n plus 2. <coughs> so, let's, uh, we'll do... A quick example, uh, 77.3. They tell me to find four consecutive odd integers such that the sum of the first and the fourth is 25 greater than the opposite of the third. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to write my four odd integers as unknowns. Let's go with green. So <clears throat> odd number number one, or the first, is going to be n. The second is going to be n plus 2. The third is going to be n plus 4, not 3, and the fourth is going to be n plus 6. So you just keep adding 2 every time. <clears throat> now, they tell me that the sum of the first and the fourth is 25 greater. So let's, let's do that. The sum of the first and the fourth. So the first one is n. The fourth one is n plus 6. So n plus n plus 6 is 25 greater. So 25 greater tells me I'm just going to add 25 all the way at the end. So I'm going to put 20 plus 25 at the end. 25 greater than the opposite of the third. This is where things can get tricky sometimes. The opposite of the third. <clears throat> now the third is, and you have to kind of think of all of these as one idea, right? So the opposite of the third is not just negative n plus 4. 
If we apply a negative to n plus 4, that negative is going to distribute, and it's going to become negative n minus 4. So the opposite of the third, negative n minus 4. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, I can start solving. <clears throat> I'll combine like terms over here. That becomes 2n plus 6. Over here, this becomes plus 21. So I have negative n plus 21. I'll go ahead and rewrite that down here. 2n plus 6 equals negative n plus 21. To finish solving, I'll go ahead and move n to the other side, and I'll subtract 6. n's cancel. 6 is cancel. And then I'm left with 3n on this side. And that is going to equal 21 minus 6, which is 15. Divide each side by 3. 15 divided by 3 is equal to 5. So n is equal to 5. So up here, n equals 5. n plus 2 is 7. n plus 4 is 9. 5 plus 6 is 11. So my numbers are 5, 7, 9, and 11. <clears throat> All right, now let's talk about fraction and decimal word problems. Um, the book tells you to draw a diagram. On the problem, they might tell you to draw a diagram. I will not make you draw a diagram. You do not have to draw a diagram. <clears throat> but uh, these problems follow equations that we've already learned. Fraction times of equals is, or decimal times of equals is. Um, or you can remember that of is kind of like multiplying. Is is like an equal sign. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and dive right in. They tell me that Lopez uses used a 5 iron, but the ball covered only 4 fifths of the required distance. If she hit the ball 112 yards, what is the required distance? <clears throat> <clears throat> so, let's see here. This 5 iron, useless information, it's kind of like a trick. We don't care what kind of iron she used, we just want to know how much of the distance that she covered, and then how far that was. So she covered four-fifths of the required distance. So four-fifths times x, <clears throat> required distance being the unknown. So four-fifths times the required distance. So four, I'll go over to my work paper, four over five of meaning times x, the required distance, what we do not know. Now, it says that she hit the ball 112 yards. So this is where we have to use a little bit logic. Uh, we have to logically understand that four-fifths of the required distance is equal to 112 yards. So then, we take this expression, we make it equal to 112. Now all we have to do is find out what x is equal to. To do this, I will multiply by the reciprocal of five-fourths. That cancels, so then I get x on this side. x is equal to 112 over 1 times five-fourths. Uh, I can divide each of these by 2. That gives me 66. Yep. No, 56. Excuse me. 56. Uh, 56 can also be divided by 2. That's 1. And then that becomes 20... Oh, can't mess this one up. Hold on. 25, 20, 28. 28. <clears throat> okay. And then 28 times 5 will give me x. Uh, 5 times 2 is 10, add the 0 from the 20, so 5 times 20 is 100, uh, and then 5 times 8 is 40, so 100 plus 40, 140. So x is equal to 140. And what did they say it was? Yards. Distance is in yards. <clears throat> so same concepts of fractions and decimals that we've been using before. Uh, it's just in word uh, story, story problem form. If you have any questions, let me know on Moodle, and I will see you in class.